We have an optimal red top battery. We have a regular ground cable. This black one with the loom on it goes straight to the fuse panel and the red one goes to a circuit breaker. You have your regular wire coming in from the battery and that goes into the top post through the 200 amp breaker. And then the interesting thing I did was it splits into two. So one wire goes to the starter and the other goes to the alternator. If you want to learn how to make this panel, there's going to be a card at the top of the video. Click on that and you can watch my video on how to make this. You can see I have each relay labeled. 12 fans, fuel pump, tail light, headlight, and then and the fuse strip is labeled too. That way I don't have to trace any of the wiring. If a fuse blows, I can pull it, read the number, and know what's not working. Power comes in here through our fuses to our relays. This right here is power in for the switches and also power out for the loads. This big relay right here, if you guys are wondering, is an ECU relay. This is kind of a more complicated topic, but what I did was I took power from here, rated to uh, 40 amps, going to an 80 amp relay, our three powers right here, going to our ECU. That way I don't need two ECU switches or three ECU switches. I just need one and we get three different powers at three different amperages. See, this is the tail light harness traveling through the trunk. Splits into two, one goes into this tail light, and then we have our other one goes across into this tail light. You can see we have our two battery cables going to our starter and the alternator as well as the regular harness. You can see our water temp sensor, which yes, I know is on the wrong side. I already ordered new radiator hoses. I'm gonna relocate it, but you can just see how that kind of works. It's hard to see, but right up in there, that little gold piece right there, that's our oil pressure sensor. The starter solenoid, which is this wire right here. And then we have our alternator connector, which is the voltage regulator and the charge light. Coming down through here, we have our fan harness for our dual electric fans. Shout out ISR. And then we have our headlight harness, which this one's not hooked up yet, but you can see how I wired that. And then it travels across, that one does turn on, which I will show you guys. We have our power coming here, which goes around there. And these, it's three wires. I have an extra one for when I have my KA, which I have to take out still, but these are our power wires. And that's the ECU connector, which connects to the engine harness and goes to the ECU and into the engine. And we have our main power switch, which activates power to all these. So instead of cutting off one switch at a time, like fuel, ECU, lights to turn the car off, you just hit that, car shuts off. It's like a key off switch. Then we have ECU that closes this relay and allows power to go to the ECU. Turns on the ECU light. We have our alternator charge light wired in there too, so you can see that. Uh, moving on, we have our fuel pump, which you're gonna hear when I turn it on. That's gonna close this relay, go back to the fuel pump, power that. So you guys heard that. Instruments, we don't have it in because our dash is out, but basically that's our gauges. So basically what that does is close relay seven, activate our gauges, which I can't show you right now because the dash is out. Uh, I might plug one in or I might put in a clip from a different video. But that's what that does. We have our lights right here. I don't have both my headlights wired up. I only have a bulb in one of them, but they do both work. There's the first one right there. You can see that one works. I have it wired up so it runs high beams all the time. And then we're gonna take a walk back here, look at our tail lights, which you guys can see are on. I don't have anybody to press the brake pedal. Hopefully the reflection's good enough, but break down, you can see the light getting brighter. We have our fans, which will close both of the fan relays. The reason I run two fan relays is because each fan pulls a certain amount of amps and if you run all that amperage through one relay, it'll burn it up. And people always burn up fan relays. If you have dual electric fans, always run dual relays with it. You guys can hear that. And then I'm just gonna show you kind of how the main power switch works. I'm gonna turn on the fans and I'm gonna hit the main power switch and it cuts power to everything that's turned on. So that's the main power switch. For starting the engine, 
how the ground works, this entire side is all grounded out. You put your grounds in here and it routes it all to a common ground. And that common ground is right there. That's the ground for every single thing in the car that turns onto the fuse and relay panel. These fuse and relay panels are actually very, very simple. It's just, you gotta kinda know the basics of electricity and how things work in the car. Once you know that, it's very simple to do. A lot of people have done this. Even people with no experience have done this. I didn't have much experience when I did this and it came out very good. This is my second prototype. Um, the first one was kind of rough. I still have videos on that, so I'll put a card in. You guys can watch my first chassis harness, which was kind of iffy, but that was my first time ever doing it. The wiring's not exactly cleaned up yet, but everything is routed nicely for the stuff that's permanent. We still have to figure out how we're gonna cut down on this, cut down on this, but that's when we get the panel that goes on the dash. That's basically my chassis harness. It's very, very simple, very, very effective. It shaves a ton of weight. You guys can see I don't have any sound deadening. The sound deadening was a pain to get out. I had to use dry ice and scrape it up because mine was just really stuck. But in total, all the sound deadening shaved 35 pounds, which is a lot for sound deadening coming out of a car. It's a very bare essentials build. I don't have blinkers. I don't have hazards. I don't have reverse lights. The windows, I don't have any wiring for the windows, basically how I do it. Those two wires in there is a power and ground, and based off which gets the power and which gets the ground, depends if the window goes down or if the window goes up. So I can roll them down automatically by just powering those two wires. That's how I do it. I don't have a switch or anything for the windows. Right now, I actually got my alternator working now, so I put the charge light in, and I have to fix up a small coolant link, and then I'm gonna get you guys right with that 50 subscriber burnout because we're at 50 on it now. So thank you guys for subscribing. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this gave you a little bit more of an insight into how I built my car. If you guys like this video, if you guys found it helpful or it gave you motivation to, you know, do your own chassis harness, leave a like. Uh, if you guys want to see more of this build, make sure you subscribe. Comment what you guys want to see. The build is almost ready to hit the streets hard. Okay, guys, uh, quarantine's kind of sucking right now. But once quarantine's over, we're going to start working again, getting money, building this car. You know, it's going to be much more videos. I'm going to have much more uh, things to post. So, yeah, that's about it. Uh, we'll catch you guys later. Peace out.